Hey guys, welcome to case 8. Let's hop right into it. So we have a 60 year old man brought to the ED by his daughter. 20 minutes ago, he was carrying heavy boxes from his house to a truck when he felt short of breath and suddenly lost consciousness. He was unresponsive for 15 seconds before he regained consciousness. He was not confused after this episode. He does not have chest pain. He recalls experiencing episodic shortness of breath and chest tightness while playing soccer over the past year. These symptoms resolve with rest. He has no personal history of serious illness and does not take medications. Vital signs are within normal limits. Heart rate is 95. Pulse is delayed but regular. Blood pressure is 103 over 79. Which of the following is the most likely to confirm the diagnosis? So here are our answer choices. I'll give you a second to pause the video now, pick the correct one, and then we'll go on talking about this case. All right, so if you picked echocardiogram, you'd be correct. So let's try to understand our case a little bit more. So we have an elderly man here who had a uh, episode of loss of consciousness. It was sudden onset, okay? He was unresponsive for a brief period of time and he was not confused after the episode. This is our textbook definition for a syncopal episode. What does syncope mean? It's essentially a reduced perfusion to the brain. Now, how that happens can have different reasons, and we'll go through some of them in just a second. But in our case, we clearly have an elderly man who's experienced a syncopal episode. Now, he has a history of cardiac what we suspect to be a cardiac condition because he's had shortness of breath and chest tightness while playing soccer. Now, this could be a lot of things, but our main giveaway here is his pulse is delayed but regular. This is a giveaway for aortic stenosis. So his aortic stenosis is causing his chest tightness and episodic shortness of breath, and also it could be the cause of his syncopal episode. So we'd want to do an echocardiogram to look at the aortic valve, to look at the aorta, to see if that's the cause. When looking at syncope, we have three main culprits. Our most obvious one is cardiac. So if the heart is not able to pump out enough blood, we're not able to get enough blood to the brain, causing our acute loss of consciousness. Now we're looking for acute cardiac changes, right? Syncope is an acute change. So things like arrhythmia, things like an MI, cardiac tamponade, things that happen to the heart very quickly and then cause it to not be able to pump out enough blood. So cardiac, one of our main culprits here. Another one that's less obvious is pulmonary. So things like a pulmonary embolism can classically cause syncope. Why? Because if we're blocking our circulation in our lungs, right, all of our circulation has to flow through our lungs. So now our blood volume that's getting back to our brain is decreased and we have a syncopal episode. And then neurological so our autonomic nervous system controls our blood pressure for example when you stand up your sympathetic nerve nerves stimulate your arteries to contract and maintain your blood pressure so if we have someone standing up and our baroreceptors for example in our internal carotids as well as our aortic arch aren't functioning properly you're not going to be able to maintain blood pressure really quickly let's explain the baroreceptor response to standing up. So here I drew a crude diagram of our aorta right here. And um, when your heart is pumping out blood through the aorta, there are a couple sensors in the internal carotids as well as in the aortic arch, which sense essentially pressure and they're stretched out or collapsed. So when you're standing up and the blood goes from your upper torso into your legs, the output from the heart is decreased. And these receptors, uh, kind of collapse a little bit and it's detected by two cranial nerves so cranial nerve 9 and cranial nerve 10 detect these take the signals from these receptors they now go to the brain and the brain says uh oh you know my my blood pressure isn't enough to maintain perfusion so i'm going to release sympathetic uh, output and the sympathetic output goes to three main places it goes to your heart and it increases both contractility as well as the heart rate and then it also goes to the adrenals, which release catecholamines, responsible for constricting blood vessels, and the blood vessels themselves, which constricts them and causes increase in blood pressure and our flow stays the same. So this 
uh, increase in heart rate is actually really fast. It happens within two heartbeats. So the compensation is very, very quick. All right. So the baroreceptor response is something that's very important in maintaining our perfusion to our brain when we stand up, as you can see in this diagram over here to the right. The blood flow goes to your legs, and in order to compensate, we're increasing pressure by increasing heart rate, by increasing catecholamine production, and by constricting your arteries. The three things you want to look for in syncopal episodes, and that most places will test, are ECG, CBC, and orthostatics. ECG is going to show you arrhythmias in the heart, and that's an acute cause for our syncopal episode. Okay, CBC is going to tell you if your person has any electrolyte abnormalities, which could be potentially causing their syncope, because electrolytes, as you know, affect the heart rhythm, and they can also affect your neurological structures. Then, um, CBC can also tell you if you're something like you're anemic or you have a massive volume depletion, which could be causing your syncopal episode. And orthostatics is tested to see if your cause of your syncope is neurologic or if there's some other potential cause. So let's see how we test orthostatic hypotension. So we're going to have the patient lie down and they're going to lie down for about five minutes. Okay. Then you're going to get them to stand up. And when they stand up, you don't test blood pressure at that very moment. You wait one minute. Okay. Then you're going to test blood pressure. Wait one more minute, test blood pressure again, and wait one more minute, test blood pressure a third time. So you make three measurements. While you measure these uh, blood pressures, you're going to look for three things. You're going to look for a systolic drop of greater than 20, or if the systolic blood pressure drops below 90, a diastolic drop of greater than 10, okay? And if any of these happens, you're going to have orthostatic hypertension. Now, while you're measuring the blood pressure, um, you also should measure pulse because pulse is going to tell you something very important about the etiology. So for example, when you stand up, the compensation of pulse should be about an increase of 10 or so, 10 to 15, okay? If it's way below this, then you're going to see that this is more likely a neurological cause. So your baroreceptors aren't stimulating your sympathetic system enough to increase the pulse. Um, so neurological orthostasis. If it's way above 10, so let's say it's 35 plus, right? Then we're going to get something called postural tachycardia syndrome, which we're going to discuss in a second. And that's another cause of syncope. Before we discuss all the potential causes of syncope, let's go through the answer choices very briefly because they're pretty straightforward. So coronary angiography. Coronary angiography tests for coronary artery disease or a blockage in the coronary arteries. As you know, if they're occluded over 70%, you're going to start getting anginal symptoms, chest pain. So our person has had these uh, chest discomfort symptoms. It hasn't been stated as really pain, more of a tightness. And he also has no other risk factors that were mentioned. Remember, his blood pressure was normal, even a bit low. So he doesn't have hypertension. There's no mention of diabetes, hyperlipidemia, no family history of heart cardiac disease. So coronary angiography is really lower on our list of tests to do. CT angio. Okay, CT angio is done if you suspect something like a PE or if you suspect an aortic dissection. So we don't really have a huge PE um, indication here. Well, he, did, he didn't have chest pain during this episode, right? He did have some dyspnea, but it's not progressive. No immobility, no uh, signs for DVT, didn't tell us he was on a 10 hour plane ride or anything, and no mention of a hypercoagulable state. So CT angio, um, not our best test here, okay? Also aortic dissection, so we ruled out PE, aortic dissection, is sudden onset, no sharp tearing, tearing chest pain, and it's radiating to the back. That wasn't mentioned. So chest pain is kind of ruling out our CT angio here. Echocardiogram. Okay, so that's our correct answer. We have a suspected aortic stenosis because we have a delayed pulse. Okay. And um, early aortic stenosis is actually asymptomatic at rest and improves with rest. So it can present with sort of a mild, like, um, cardiac failure presentation and how it works is we have our exertion 
then our exertion causes our peripheral arteries to vasodilate because they need to feed the muscles more oxygenated blood. Aortic stenosis, on the other hand, is obstructing this flow and is preventing our increased cardiac output. Now we have these vessels which are dilated in our body, taking up all the blood so it's not going to our brain, and that's how we get the syncopal episode. Okay, And the main giveaway here again was our delayed pulse. And what really would have given it away was the crescendo-decrescendo murmur if they gave it to us. Then we have the tilt table test. This is a test again for orthostatic hypotension, okay, postural hypotension. This occurs when you stand after prolonged lying or sitting. So remember five minutes and this person has a history of chest, not pain really, but tightness on, on exertion, which doesn't really fit too much with our orthostatic hypotension just as a pure orthostatic hypotension picture, okay? So most likely if we did our orthostatics on our guy, he would he would be normal. Then uh, continuous ambulatory ECG. So I told, we discussed that ECG is done in orthostatic patients to look for arrhythmia. And if you're still suspecting an arrhythmia, you're gonna put them on this continuous ECG, which is also called a Holter monitor. This is done for 24 to 48 hours to detect the arrhythmias. And since uh, syncopes are usually not frequent enough to be detectable in such a short period of time, you would do this. Uh, but something that points away from this is that our guy has a regular pulse. So the hint in the question, regular pulse on physical exam, arrhythmia is not as likely. Then we have our cardiac enzymes. So it's our troponins and our CKMB. This is done if you're suspecting an MI. So because our guy doesn't have really a chest pain picture, um, and doesn't really show many of the risk factors for MI, we're not going to want to start off with this test, okay? He is more of a syncopal picture rather than a heart attack, even though a heart attack can cause syncope, right? Because it's a cardiac cause. Then we have carotid, carotid duplex ultrasonography. This is done for people with a established carotid brie or history of transient ischemic attack or stroke. Now, what's the difference between TIA and stroke? Remember, the symptoms of TIA last less than 24 hours. After that, stroke. All right. Um, carotid stenosis uh, does not typically present with syncope, and you're more likely to uh, get an asymptomatic case for carotid stenosis. Or if you're going to get symptoms, they're going to be TIA or stroke. EEG. Okay, so this is if we're looking at seizure. But as we discussed, this guy didn't have a postictal state, so he just bounced right back from a syncopal episode, regained consciousness really fast. So seizure is really not on the highest on our list on our differential. So let's discuss the subtypes of syncope. We here we have cardiac, reflex, and orthostatic. And let's start with cardiac. So cardiac has two main subtypes: arrhythmic and cardiovascular. In arrhythmic um, syncope we have the cause as really being an altered heart rate. It's a rhythm that doesn't cause maximum potential for the cardiac output. So we can have a bradycardia, a tachycardia, anything uh, of the sort that doesn't cause a good ejection fraction. So things under this category would be um, patients with sick sinus syndrome, so a um, faulty SA node, then we have ventricular tachycardia, things like torsade de point, these kinds of arrhythmias. Um, if these arrhythmias are causing frequent losses of consciousness, you, have some, you could suspect something like Adam-Stokes syndrome. Um, and obviously heart blocks and supraventricular tachycardia are in this category as well. Then if we look at cardiovascular causes, this is a reduced outflow, so an outflow obstruction. Things like a massive MI, for example, could cause this. Aortic stenosis, which is what we had here. Mitral valve prolapse, any kind of valve changes, okay? PE can also cause outflow obstruction, right? It's blocking the pulmonary circulation. Uh, any kind of septal defects in the heart, cardiac tamponade, uh, cardiac hypertrophy. So this is really structural, and this is more of a neurological heart change, okay? So the heart structure, as well as the heart uh, nervous system flow 
are two of our main culprits for cardiac. Next we have our reflex type of syncopes. We have neurocardiac, which is also known as vasovagal, emotional, carotid, and situational syncopes. So let's start with neurocardiac. And you'll often hear the term vasovagal syncope. And this happens with prolonged standing that uh, has no compensated heart rate. So after standing for a while, the baroreceptors kind of get accommodated and the heart rate does not accelerate appropriately. This, common happen, this commonly happens in younger patients and usually the first episode occurs before the age of 40 um, and can be recurrent. So uh, vasovagal, uh, we have neurocardiac, which is prolonged standing. Just remember that, prolonged standing without adequate heart rate uh, compensation. Then we have emotional. Emotional syncope is a subtype of the vasovagal type and pain or emotional stress can cause a aberrant response in the um, sympathetic and parasympathetic systems. So when that happens, the system goes out of whack and the sympathetics and parasympathetics cannot coordinate blood pressure control. And so we have our syncopal episode from that. Then we have carotid sinus syndrome. This carotid sinus syndrome is associated with atherosclerotic changes and the carotid sinus can no longer cause an increase in systolic blood pressure um, in the appropriate time. So as you know, the internal carotids have our baroreceptors and if those baroreceptors aren't functioning, then we have a no blood pressure compensation or it doesn't happen as effectively just with the aortic receptors. So our blood pressure doesn't compensate properly and we have syncope. So this is our carotid sinuses from our internal carotid baroreceptors. Okay, those are out of function. Those, that's called carotid sinus syndrome. And then we have situational. This kind of is an overarching, uh, overarching topic covering all the other subtypes. So um, in situational syncopes, we have a vagus response that's out of whack, uh, which can cause peripheral dilation that's inappropriate and results, resulting in decreased perfusion. Things like excessive coughing, for example, um, even micturition or menses, right, uh, can cause this kind of syncope. So micturition, let's say you're going to urinate, that's another name for urination. Uh, you have an excessive vagal tone during that because you need parasympathetics to urinate. So uh, that can result in a drop in blood pressure and then your syncopal episode. So this uh, common one in situational is definitely micturitional syncope. Then we have our orthostatic subtype. So orthostatic subtype uh, is standing up. So postural change is not adequately compensated for. And there's two main subtypes here, sympathotonic and asympathotonic. So sympathotonic versus asympathotonic just means A here in the sympathotonic, the sympathetic nervous system is working, and in the asympathotonic, it's not working. So in sympathotonic syncope, we have a drop in the systolic blood pressure when you're standing up, and then we have excessive sympathetic output. So the heart rate increases like crazy but it's not able to compensate for the standing up. Why? Because of other problems, such as the person has severe dehydration or hypovolemia. Um, let's say they're on a vasodilator, so the heart isn't able to compensate. Even though the sympathetics are working, the compensation isn't enough. So sympathotonic means their sympathetics are working, but there are other forces such as dehydration, medications, even prolonged bread rest can do this. Um, causing orthostatic hypotension. Then we have asympathotonic. This is when your sympathetic system is not working. So we have a decrease in systolic blood pressure when we stand up, and then our sympathetics aren't pumping out enough signal to maintain our perfusion. And what can cause this? So remember this one, diabetic autonomic neuropathy. And Parkinson's can also cause these two. So diabetes and Parkinson's cause your sympathetic system to degenerate, and then you can have syncope from that. And then lastly, we have postural tachycardia syndrome. 
and this happens when you stand up and there is no significant drop in blood pressure, but there's a massive increase in heart rate. So uh, I told you we talked about uh, 30 plus, right? So let's say you're, you're standing up and the blood pressure hasn't dropped really that much in your case, and then your blood, your heart rate goes crazy. Now, if the heart beats way too fast, it doesn't have time enough to fill, so the cardiac output is decreased, and then you can get syncope from that. So postural tachycardia syndrome. So I hope this was a good review of syncope for you. And uh, I hope we covered enough of the ideology behind syncope, some of the things to look out for, okay, and why each of the answer choices was correct or incorrect. And I'll see you guys in the next video.